did you change away from number five so that Chris's number could get retired? Is that the thinking there? That definitely wasn't the thinking, um, but it's awesome that he's receiving this honor um, at the game on Saturday. Uh, I didn't know that it was happening when I decided to change, but uh, kudos to him. I'm happy for him. Josiah, do you know him very well? I mean, watch, watch clips and, you know, since you've been here. Definitely have seen clips of, uh, from him, seen him work out here, um, had good conversations with him. He's a great guy um, besides being a great uh, basketball player. I've learned a lot from him, um, trying to perfect my shot, learning how he um, was able to, you know, shoot the ball so well. Um, and just sit down, um, talk about life when he was here. Um, he's really down to earth. Uh, you would never know that he had all these accolades. Um, and he's been through a lot. And so, you know, me going through injuries, and I, I wouldn't say it compares to what he had to go through, but just learning from him and how he was able to handle adversity um, has helped me out a lot. Once you started paying attention more to Tennessee basketball, I guess during the recruiting process, how long did it take you to learn, or maybe once you got here, who Chris was and everything that he had done? Yeah, I didn't hear about him much um, before getting here. But like I said, he's always been around during the summers. And so, you know, I see him working out, and he's not missing. And so I, I ended up asking coaches and, and GAs, like, who is this guy? And then from there on, I just looked up highlights and got to know him better. Um, and so uh, I would say I didn't learn about him until I got here, but I'm very familiar with him now. Just I just, I mean, how are you feeling after playing three games? I mean, are, are you good? I mean, is there any, any setbacks? No, I feel great. Um, I don't feel like there's any setbacks. We're definitely trending upwards right now. Um, I, I wouldn't say my knee's an issue at all. Um, it's still just trying to get uh, my minutes back up, still trying to get into game shape, with, which – uh, sometimes can take a while, but I'd say that's really just my main focus right now. My body feels great. What have you learned about Chris Lofton's legacy that he left here? That I don't think anybody else can duplicate it. Um, he's, if not the greatest shoot, shooter in college basketball ever, in my opinion. Um, you know, the people of Tennessee, Vol Nation loves him uh, for good reason. He's a great guy. And that I, I learned that if I just try to emulate uh, him on and off the court, that my legacy will be will be left uh, right where it needs to be. I know Kentucky is enough motivation, but do you feel an extra sense of motivation this weekend to try and win for him with being his home state team? Definitely. Uh, you know, we always want to beat uh, everybody we play, but especially the rivalry games, you know, the crowd's going to be here. Um, we want to put on a show and, and stay undefeated at home. Um, but definitely, you know, trying to, you know, have this day be as good as possible for him and that, in that case being a win. Have you hunted your shot more over these last three games? I wouldn't say more. I just come out with the aggressive mindsets that my, my coaches and my teammates need from me. Um, and I'd say that, you know, I'm shooting the shots that they want me to shoot, that I'm comfortable shooting. Um, sometimes they go in, sometimes they don't. But I wouldn't say I, I've come out um, thinking I have to shoot. I just feel like that's my role on this team. You asked what you knew about Lofton when you got here. What did you know about Tennessee, Kentucky when you got here? I didn't know a lot. I remember. I came on uh, one of my visits, an unofficial visit, when they beat them here, I think, uh, when Admiral and Grant and Bone were on the team. And that was the craziest atmosphere I'd ever seen. And I knew right then and there that this was definitely something I was excited to be a part of. And, you know, since being here, the rivalry has, has been great. Um, we just want to keep that tradition going. What made it crazy? The craziest part that I can remember is uh, the Admiral dunk. Um, and then the crowd went crazy. And then the, the lob pass from Grant. Grant to, to JB, yeah, those were the two craziest moments. And then I think they, they beat them pretty handedly, so it was just awesome to see. And then the, the celebrations afterwards was, was, was great. What changed for this team after that game at Ruff last year? I wish y'all could have been in that film session. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of soul searching that we had to do as a team. You know, we, we always hang our hats on the defensive end, and to let a team score 107 points on us is you know, uncommon, but you know, it, you, have, you have to understand that it can't happen ever again. And so we, we did a lot of, of soul searching. Coach got on us pretty heavily and we got on each other. And I think that we just, you know, held each other accountable. And, you know, we, we got embarrassed on national television. We told ourselves we didn't want that to happen again. Brad talked earlier this week about how Jemai, I think last year after that game, or at some point when y'all were struggling in the month of January last year, talked to you about kind of your energy and how that impacts the, the team as a whole. What was that conversation like with him and hearing that and, and what's been your mindset since? Yeah, it was really good. Um, it was actually after the LSU game where we just had like a, a players and coaches meeting. So we, let, we, we put it out all on the table. Everybody shared their feelings and that he mentioned it to me in front of everybody, which I feel like um, was kudos to him because that's, that's hard to do to call somebody out. 
Um, but I feel like that's the culture that we have here. You know, when you're calling somebody out or you're expecting something from somebody, it's, it's all from a place of love. And he just wants me to be at my best. And I appreciate him for that. Um, and it definitely made me do a lot of self-reflection, just knowing that, you know, even though um, there's days where I don't have the energy or feel like I, I, I need to take a day off, I, I really can't do that uh, being one of the leaders of this team because I feel like um, this team goes as not only as I go, but as um, the senior guys go, um, the leaders of this team, the people who have been here. So, you know, just got to come in each and every day, um, whether I feel like it or not, and have a smile on my face, be enthusiastic, um, and hopefully the day will go well. How have you seen Euros respond since Rick called him out after that Arizona game? I've seen him respond great. Um, you know, he's cut down on the antics, and he's he's been playing really good all year. Um, it's just sometimes he he's very emotional, and he lets that kind of get the best of him. He and he'll admit it. Um, and sometimes it hurt us throughout the year, um, but he's he's responded really well. He's doing his job, which is uh, rebounding and defense, and I, f I feel like he's excelling at a high level. With that. Jemai moment. What's that like as an upperclassman when a guy who's been here six months kind of says that? And how do you have to kind of humble yourself? You yeah, that? it was a lot. Um, I, like I said, I had to do a lot of self-reflection and, you know, understand that I wasn't doing my job as somebody who is a leader on this team or people who look up to me day in and day out. And so, you know, I know I had I wasn't on my A game and that I had to take a lot of steps, not on the basketball court, but just me as a person just to be better. What's going to be key to slowing down Oscar as a group on Saturday? Like you said, it's, it's as a group. It's not one person. It's not just the five or four. It's guarding them. Um, it's, it's us as a team stopping him. We know that um, they like to get, in, get him the ball in isolation, so we can't leave our post guys or whoever's guarding them on an island um, and just play team defense against them and trying to contain them. Just like, what are you seeing from Zakai like, this, this past month? It seems like he's really cranked it up a notch. Yeah, he's been playing at a really high level. I, I, I know Coach got on him early in the season just about him not being a pass-first player and wanting him to see him uh, get his teammates involved or get us involved more, and I think he's, he's done a great job of that. I think the last couple games, last three games that he's played, he's put on a, you know, a show of just how good of a point guard he really is, and I think that he's really accepting that role right now and excelling at it. Thank you. Thanks,